Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the statue. This statue, or bust, is said to have been made by a man named William, who enjoyed making these sorts of things out of clay. Unfortunately, however, legend goes that this specific statue was made on the same day that William was crushed to death during a tragic work accident. A co-worker of his who showed up to work the following day found that this statue was still there, so he took it home with him. For a while, he kept the statue hidden, but when he took it out to display it, things started to go awry. It started with just a heavy and uninviting feeling, but soon things escalated. He began to hear doors slamming on their own, only to go and find them wide open. If anything was placed next to the statue, the next time he would find it completely shattered, and at one point he found the statue in a position that he never placed it in. He finally had the last straw when he saw a dark, shadowy figure, or a sort of mist, moving around near where he placed the statue. After this, he was so spooked he had a friend list the item for him on eBay because he just simply needed to get rid of it. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Iceman. Okay, so this is not an object because it's a mummy, but I still had to include him on this list because the story is so crazy. The mummy of Otzi, who is also referred to as the Iceman, was found in 1991 in the Otzel Alps in Italy. It is believed that Otzi lived around 3000 BC and his body became mummified and preserved because of the glacier that surrounded him post-mortem. While this is an incredibly interesting discovery, the finding of Otzi may have come in a package with an old curse just waiting to be released. Here's the thing, the people who helped with the discovery of Otzi are all dying under mysterious circumstances. I mean, we are currently at person number 7 within one year, so that's very suspicious. When molecular archaeologist Tom Loy was writing a book about Otzi, he passed away from a blood related condition that he was diagnosed with shortly after becoming involved with the Iceman. The German tourist, Helmut Simon, who discovered the mummy, felt his death while hiking in the same spot he saw Otzi. Dieter Warnick, who was the head of the mountain rescue team that was assigned to finding the mummy, died of a heart attack at just age 45, just an hour after Simon's funeral. To avoid this becoming an hour long list, I'll stop here, but that is just half of those who seemingly fell victim to the curse of the Iceman. I don't know, maybe disturbing a man who's been in the same spot for 53 centuries wasn't the best idea anyone has ever had. In our number 8 spot today, we have the beds. Back in 1986, couple Deborah and Alan Tolman moved into a new home with their children in Wisconsin. The following year, they bought a second hand set of bunk beds for their kids for a hundred bucks, but as it would turn out, they bought much more than they had originally bargained for. When they brought the bunk beds into their home, they clearly must have brought something else along with it. It started when they began to see strange shapes in their home, and they would hear disembodied voices that, despite how hard they tried, they could not find the source of. They found themselves fighting with clocks and radios that turned on by themselves, they would find furniture that had moved seemingly all by itself, and sometimes they'd even see an apparition of an old woman. In the end, they not only threw the beds in the landfill, but they also moved from the home just to be safe. As far as we know, the beds remained in the landfill, but who's to say for sure? In our number 7 spot today, we have the Crying Children paintings. These paintings were a series created by an Italian painter who was known as Giovanni Breglin, but his name was really Bruno Amarillo. Bruno was born in Venice in 1911 and fought in World War II, which ended up being the inspiration for a lot of his paintings. During his time in the war, he saw a lot of suffering, and this is where he got the idea for the series of Crying Children paintings. After the paintings were sold, there began to be reports of fires in all of the places where the paintings were held. While this could have just been a strange coincidence, the weirdest part is that the paintings always remained intact while everything else around them was burned. This quickly became the most talked about thing and was on the front of every newspaper, and the paintings quickly gained the nickname Diablo. It caused the paintings to end up being replicated and mass produced, but none of the replicas hold quite the same powers as the originals. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Goddess Statue. The Goddess of Death statue is is also known as the Woman from the Lem. This artifact was made out of limestone and it was created somewhere around 3500 BC and was found in Cyprus in 1878. Over the years, it has belonged to many different families who all have been ruined and dismantled by death. After the first six years of ownership, all seven members of the first family died. It then moved on to a second owner and after four years, death began to come to him and his family as well. There was then a long period where it was unclaimed, but once the third family finally got a hold of it, several members of that family began to die as well. The third family ended up turning it over to the Royal Scottish Museum because it is of course an ancient relic, but legend goes that the museum curator who initially took care of it died within a year of receiving it. So maybe the curse lives on. In our number 
five spot today we have the goblet. This is an item that was found in a museum, but it was a museum of specifically haunted things, so I feel like it still counts. This goblet is said to have been used for rituals of necromancy, which poses a few questions for me personally. What did they put in it and presumably drink out of it? Holy water? Wine? Blood? All the above? Who knows? Either way, here's the real kicker. This goblet was of course for sale on eBay because why not? And the seller was claiming that it has an amazing energy to it. Okay. What kind of energy? Well, they said that some find it strangely positive, but that many perceive it as negative and malignant. All right. Don't think I'll be bidding on that auction, to be perfectly honest. In our number four spot today, we have the Surrey Ghost Car. On December 11th, 2002, a call came into the Surrey Police Department. The caller reported that they had just seen a car lose control and run off the road and then presumably crash. It was, of course, an emergency call, but not necessarily anything out of the ordinary. That was until authorities got to the location and realized that they couldn't find any evidence of a crash. They kept searching and ended up finding a maroon colored car that was nose down in a ditch nearby. By, but this car was covered in so much undergrowth that it must have been here for months. This meant that somehow this crash went undetected for five months and worst of all, so did the body that lay nearby. Using dental records, they were able to identify the body as a man who had been wanted for robbery since July of that year. It is said that the sighting of the car leaving the road was a ghostly replay of the events that had taken place five months prior. In our number three spot today, we have doorknobs. To be honest, I wasn't expecting to ever hear about haunted doorknobs, but this might just be a thing that really does exist. These doorknobs were listed on eBay and the seller explained that they were once the knobs seen on the doors at an asylum, which truly lands on the list of creepiest places in the world. Considering everything that is said to have gone on at places like these, it truly doesn't surprise me one bit. We're looking at you, lobotomies and other horrific mental health treatments of the past. These doorknobs must have quite literally opened the door to some terrifying things that I'm sure many of us would prefer to not even think about. According to the eBay list, Listing the asylum that they came from after it was abandoned is said to have had strange whispers, occurrences, and horrifying noises coming from it. This is all to say that maybe that trip to Home Depot is better than buying antique. Just this one time. In our number two spot today, we have the Nightmare Doll. Haunted dolls like Annabelle and even Robert get a lot of hype, but they certainly aren't the only dolls with stories of curses and hauntings behind them. This Nightmare Doll was listed for sale on eBay, and according to the seller, the doll is possessed by a Dibuk, which is a malicious demon or entity. The seller of the doll is actually someone who apparently specializes in selling these sort of paranormal items that no one wants anymore. The seller explained that the owner of the doll bought it at an antique shop and while they did tell her about what the doll held, she didn't know what the word meant, so she took it anyways. Soon after purchasing it, she realized that anyone who came into contact with the doll was then plagued with terrifying nightmares and occurrences of these sort of shadow people. She only could handle this all for a couple of months before she handed the doll over for it to be sold and moved far, far away from her. In our number one spot today, we have the carving. This is a carving that was sold on eBay in 2013, which the sellers claimed had been in their family for over 60 years. It was originally found by the seller's grandparents in the attic of their home. This was back in the 1950s, and when it was found, the grandparents asked the original owners of the home where it had come from. They explained that it was a gift from a prisoner who was said to have carved it. The seller explained in their post that, quote, anyone who comes in contact with it seems to feel strange or creeped out by it. The statue mostly didn't cause too much harm, that was, until the seller tried to put it on display in their home. Once it was taken out of an old box and placed in a cabinet, strange occurrences began. They said that, quote, I began to experience the television turning off and on, lights coming on in rooms no one was in, the kids' toys coming on in the middle of the night in their room at 3 a.m. At the end of the day, despite the troubles this person had with the statue, they still ended up selling it for 85 dollars Bucks. Not a bad deal. Go rid of a demon and gain some cash for it. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Anna Baker's wedding dress. In 1836, a man named Elias Baker purchased a mansion in Altoona, Pennsylvania and moved his small family in. Elias's oldest daughter was named Anna, and when she fell in love with a steel worker, things took a dark turn. Anna's father didn't want her dating this man, but she kept doing it in secret. The story goes that Anna and the man planned a secret wedding and were going to elope. Unfortunately, Elias found out and freaked out. He apparently purchased the steel mill that the man worked for and then forced him to have to move to an entirely different city so as to prevent him from being able to continue seeing Anna. Anna, of course, was furious with her father and I'm sure this was only made worse by his decision to offer other men to her, to which she, of course, declined because 
that's just weird. Anna instead locked herself in a room with her wedding dress that she never got to wear. Anna unfortunately never married after that and spent the rest of her life being terribly upset about the whole incident. After her death, it is said that her anger and despair ended up going into the wedding dress. Members of the Baker family reported seeing the dress in different places around the house, despite no one moving it themselves. Some have even reported seeing Anna's spirit dressed in the gown around the house as well. Coming in at number 9 is Busby's stoop chair, aka the dead man's chair. Lovely, great, what a time to be alive, or well, clearly not. Now this chair is apparently haunted by the infamous murderer Thomas Busby. Now Busby was hanged in 1702 for murdering his father-in-law Daniel. Now the reason he killed him is varied. One story claims they were in business together and had an argument, Thomas lost his temper and then he killed him. The other story is that Daniel sat on his chair without permission and then he killed him. Either way, both are pretty ridiculous, but again, one of them has to have happened. Now, right before Thomas was executed, he was granted his final request, and his was to have a last drink in his chair. And as he sat on it, he said, Death shall come swiftly to anyone that dares to sit in my chair. Because frankly, he was salty and wanted to watch the world burn. And he successfully did. Since that moment, death actually has come to many, many people who have sat on the chair, so much so the landlord actually donated it to the Thirsk Museum. But even they had trouble with people wanting to sit on it and commit suicide, so they actually had to hang it from the ceiling. Can you imagine? This chair is so screwed that they actually had to hang it from the ceiling so people wouldn't sit on it and kill themselves. Like, y'all, y'all on some bull. <laughs> In our number 8 spot today, we have the Blarney Stone. For hundreds of years, the Blarney Stone has resided within Blarney Castle, which is near Cork, Ireland. The stone is a piece of limestone, and legend says that those who give the stone a smooch will then be given the gift of the gab. This little smooch can bestow the power of being able to talk your way out of any situation, which would be incredibly useful, but there are those who always try to indulge in too much of a good thing. The issues start when you attempt to take a piece of the stone, no matter how small, away from a home. Those who don't follow the rules and take the stone end up being cursed with bad luck. Every year the castle receives parcels from greedy tourists who tried their luck at stealing portions of the stone. These parcels are returned with the intention of lifting the curse of misfortune. It is said that once the stone is returned, the curse will be lifted, which is most definitely good news. So I guess the moral of this curse, however, is to not be greedy and to just follow the rules. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Terracotta Army. The Terracotta Army was discovered in China and it is a massive piece of funerary art that is thought to be one of the most massive archaeological finds of modern times. It truly is incredible and it's something that's been attracting tourists from all over the world since its discovery, but for those who did the discovering, well, things haven't been going so well. In 1974, there were seven farmers who happened to stumble upon this huge discovery, and you would think that this would come with some kind of a reward, but instead, things have been going terribly for them. Soon after the discovery, the government claimed their farmland. After this, their homes were demolished in order to make way for the exhibition halls and gift shops that were to come. They didn't just get nothing for the discovery, they ended up losing because of it. This is exactly why many people believe that perhaps with the unearthing of this huge piece of art, they also dug up some sort of curse that was buried long ago. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Myrtle's Plantation Mirror. Myrtle's Plantation is located in St. Francisville, Louisiana, and it is said to be one of the most haunted places in the entire world, which seems like that would make a lot of sense. One of the reasons for this spooky reputation is because of a mirror that resides inside of it. It is said that this mirror holds the spirit of Sarah Woodruff and two of her children. Legend goes that a woman named Chloe was a slave at the plantation, and she drew up a sort of plan to get revenge on the owners of it, Sarah and her husband. Chloe baked a cake full of poison for them, but in the end, the rest of the family, except for the husband, ended up consuming the poisonous cake. When they passed away, it is said that their spirits went into the only mirror that was uncovered at the time, thus this haunted mirror was born. People who have since visited the plantation have claimed to see the family in the reflection, as well as handprints on the glass, despite the continuous polishing. In our number 5 spot today, we have tap shoes. These tap shoes were listed on eBay and they are cute as can be. They're black shiny ones with a red bow to tie them together. They look recital ready, but apparently they haven't been used in a long time and the reason behind it all is chilling. Legend goes that these shoes once belonged to a little girl who loved to dance. At some point, the shoes were retired and she would go on to meet an untimely fate. The shoes ended up being placed with other old 
The shoes ended up being placed with other old memento items and put in a closet and sort of forgotten about. The shoes, as well as the other items with it, ended up being part of an estate sale years later, but the spirit of the person who passed may have already had some other ideas about what they wanted to happen to the shoes. The seller of the shoes reported that there were mysterious happenings surrounding the shoes as they were clearing out their late aunt's house, the person who was the owner of the shoes. They explained that there were mysterious knocking sounds coming from inside of the closet, almost as if the shoes were tapping by themselves. Also, as it turns out, the house had quite a gruesome history that included killings, so if not the ant's ghost, perhaps there's another one lurking somewhere in there. In our number 4 spot today we have the dark mirror. This mirror now resides with the traveling museum of the paranormal and the occult, but prior to that, this mirror was received from the owner who had purchased it from a psychic fair. It is believed that this mirror was created sometime around the 1820s or 30s and it is actually quite beautiful to look at, despite the sinister things it seems to hold. The owner who gave it to the museum explained that every time they peered into the mirror, they saw these extremely upsetting things while looking into the dark mirror's reflection. The museum has said that since they added the mirror to their collection, there have been guests who have also reported the same kind of things. Guests have claimed to see things reflected back at them like sightings of their own corpse. In our number 3 spot today we have the water jug. Ok, estate sales are weird places. There are weird things there, some quirky items, but this has got to be one of the strangest on a whole bunch of different levels. It's a decorative drinking jug, but it's being held in a miniature cart that's being pulled by a porcelain donkey. I truly could not make that item up, nor could I make up the fact that this kitschy item is also apparently haunted. The seller of this item spoke about how he grew up with the item around as it was always displayed at his grandmother's house and that she always kept it full of water. This was all fine and dandy until after she passed away and he was taking care of the estate and he bumped into it. How was this jug filled with water when no one was there to fill it? He thought that perhaps it was just old leftover water and he just ignored it, but the same thing seemed to happen repeatedly. And it wasn't even like the water level was staying the same. It would increase, seemingly all on its own. The seller decided that this was not an item that they wanted to hold on to and decided it would be best to pass on to someone who is ready to take on this mysterious, strange object. In our number 2 spot today we have Letta the doll. Before we really dive into this one, can we just acknowledge how all cursed dolls look like they would be a cursed doll? I mean like Annabelle, Robert, they both totally look like dolls that would be holding a secret scary curse. And this doll, Letta, is just another one that we can add to that list. Letta is a doll that is said to be around 200 years old and is extremely cursed. This doll is called Letta for short as its full name is Letta Me Out. Really clever. The doll was originally found underneath a house which definitely feels like the origin story of a haunted doll. The creepy discovery came 47 years ago. Letta still lives with the man who found him. The hauntings of Letta include things like the doll walking around on its own at night, the owners finding objects around the house that have been moved into odd places, some people have even seen Letta move right in front of their own eyes, and the owner also reports finding little doll sized scuff marks around the home as well. It is said that this doll once belonged to someone who passed away while holding it, thus their spirit became trapped inside of the doll. Apparently one day in an interview about Letta, as the interviewer was asking questions about the person who passed, the doll began to move in her lap. Yeah, no thank you. Letta has his own Instagram and Facebook page in case you want to hear more about all of the creepiness surrounding this cursed doll. In our number one spot today we have the mask. This metal mask resembles the face of a monkey. It's definitely already a little strange looking, but the story is even more interesting. According to the seller of this item, they explained that they acquired this mask in Thailand, but not before they experienced a supernatural battle where a witch used spells to bind the spirit of a jinn to the mask trapping it in. Since then, the mask is said to be full of supernatural powers, some of which could bring benefits, but it takes a whole pile of work. This mask is said to have the ability to fend off vampires as well as potentially bring riches to its owner, but it needs some things in return. The entity in the mask needs regular offerings of food and drink, and it also requires the owner to meditate in front of it for 20 minutes, 3 times a day. 
Talk about high maintenance. If a person refuses to do these things while in possession of the mask, it is said that a cruel fate awaits them. I mean, what do you expect when you anger an ancient spirit? Coming up in our number 10 spot, we have Musée de Horreur Octopus Men. <laughs> That's my French accent for ya. It failed. <laughs> this is a poster that honestly gave me the creeps to look at, which is my sign for the fact that <coughs> it's cursed. This is a replica of a French poster from 1899. This poster is of a man that is seemingly half man, half octopus. The man is also wearing an eye patch and looks quite stern. So overall, the vibe of this picture is just low. Not to mention, it's literally called the Museum of Horrors. So that just sets the tone for you to be scared. Words are powerful, folks. In our number 9 spot today we have the Iceman. Okay, this one is not an object because it is rather a mummy who was once a real living person, but I still had to include him on this list today because this story is wild. The mummy of Otzi, who is also referred to as the Iceman, was found in 1991 in the Otzel Alps in Italy. It is believed that Otzi lived around 3000 BCE and his body became mummified and preserved because of the glacier that surrounded him post-mortem. While this is an incredibly interesting discovery, the finding of Otzi may have come in a package with an old curse just waiting to be released. Here's the thing, the people who helped with the discovery of Otzi are all dying under mysterious circumstances. I mean, we're currently at person number 7 within one year, so that's very suspicious. When molecular archaeologist Tom Loy was writing a book about Otzi, he passed away from a blood related condition that he was diagnosed with shortly after becoming involved with the Iceman. The German tourist Helmut Simon, who discovered the mummy, fell to his death while hiking in the same spot he saw Otzi. Dieter Warneck, who was the head of the mountain rescue team that was assigned to find the mummy, died of a heart attack at age 45 just an hour after Simon's funeral. To avoid this becoming an hour long list, I'll stop here, but that is just half of those who seemingly fell victim to the curse of the Iceman. I don't know, maybe disturbing a man who's been in the same spot for 53 centuries wasn't the best idea anyone has ever had. In our number 8 spot, we have the angry baby face. Maybe it's because I'm creeping up on my motherhood years, or maybe it's because this is genuinely, supremely creepy. I'm really unsure, but would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. This is an angry baby face mask. Actually, it's a collection of baby face masks with an angry version, a crying version, and a happy version. And all of them are quite disturbing. I think the happy version is the most nerve wracking to be honest. The baby looks like Gollum when he finally has the ring in his hands. I think the eyes are possibly the worst part. So big and grayish blue. I'm concerned that 48 people bought this, but... Whatever. In our number 7 spot we have the pig mask. Has anyone ever seen the show Black Mirror? And the first episode is with the politician and the pig. Yep, quite the disturbing show and not gonna lie, ever since that episode I've had a hard time with pigs. Actually, that's a lie, I just have never liked pigs that much if I'm being honest. <laughs> the only pig that I ever loved was from the movie Babe. Okay fine, and the one from Charlotte's Web. Anyways, this is a mask of an angry pig. Guys, did you know that pigs sometimes eat their babies? Pigs are scary, okay? This mask gives me the creeps and it's absolutely cursed. 43 people have bought this item. Correction, 43 sociopaths have bought this item. In our number 6 spot we have the family heirloom. This is a ring that is pretty creepy to look at. It's quite old and worn out and is supposedly an heirloom to the Borgia family, a prominent Italian family. This heirloom is a piece that dates back to the 1600s. It is also a piece of jewelry that is said to be haunted as it was a part of an Ed and Lorraine case at one point in its history and the case dealt with a lot of suffering. The ring is made of gold and the stones have not been identified. I've never seen a stone like it, it almost looks otherworldly. The ring has a set price of, wait for it, 3,000 US dollars. A lot of money to spend on a possession that is definitely cursed. In our number five spot, we have Aladdin's lamp. This item is probably cursed, but also it's 
really cool, so I'm conflicted as to how I feel about it. I was a hardcore Aladdin fan, not gonna lie, and I have to admit, Aladdin was definitely my first crush. <laughs> He's a dreamer who does what he can to make his dreams happen, so gotta love that in a man. Anyways, this lamp speaks to me. Does that mean whatever is haunting it is speaking to me? Does that mean I'm already being tricked? Anyways, very confusing. The seller of this lamp claims it to be haunted as well as that it possesses powers. It's also really dirty. Not sure if this seller decided to leave it dirty so that it looks like it came straight out of the desert of Agrabah, but I just, I don't understand. Like, why couldn't you have wiped it down? Like, even a little. My cleaning OCD is acting up, so let's move on. In our number four spot today, we have a haunted ring. The title of this product is literally haunted ring, so do we think it's cursed? I'm leaning towards yes. <laughs> This might be the spookiest ring that I have ever seen. It has a brassy look to it with what looks like a bird at the top, then honestly what looks like stitching or maybe a tally of something underneath, and then the letters R-O-M and some more stitching or tallying of something. It's so strange. Upon further investigation, apparently there is supposed to be an A at the end of the R-O-M, meaning it's supposed to spell out Roma, and apparently Apparently this is a ring that was made for a man for his wife named Roma, who was a survivor of World War II. Dark. Honestly, if this was a gesture of love, couldn't he have just written, I love you? Some men need guidance. <laughs> In our number three spot, we have the clown painting. This is a painting of a clown that literally looks like it's looking into your soul. <laughs> or perhaps it's looking into your ear and getting ready to pull a coin out of it. But regardless, I'm scared. It's cursed. There's clearly a spirit attached to this painting. This painting is from the 60s, and I truly wonder who in the world bought this painting back then. Also, I want to know where in the house this painting would be hung if bought, because I don't think there is a room that it would not be creepy in. Unless you had a room of clown merch, then perhaps it wouldn't be as creepy. It would just add to the collective creep vibe, but still. If you have a happy clown story and are convinced you can make me less scared of clowns, please share it with me in the comment section below. In our number two spot, we have this old Ouija board. This one might be a given as it's literally a tool to talk to the dead, but whatever, I had to put it on the list because it's clearly cursed and we should definitely stay away from this item. This is a very old version of the board that has probably passed through the hands of many in its time and it is so dark and spooky looking that it just gives me the creeps. When people play Ouija, they could be talking to good or bad spirits and they say that the bad ones can actually attach to you if you're not careful. I truly wish this game came with a list of player stories so people could be aware of how psychologically damaging it can be. I had a very dark experience with this game, so definitely stay away and do not buy it. In our number one spot, we have the Illuminati New World Order card game. Okay, I had to put this one in first because it's honestly intense. This is a card game that was invented in 1994 by an artist named Steve Jackson. This isn't just any card game though, oh no. This is a card game that has predicted a lot of crazy events that have happened in world history. There's too many predictions to count at this point, but the very fact that it was invented in 1994 and there is literally a card with two buildings and one exploding, similar to a certain attack that happened in 2001 in New York City, is mind blowing. This deck is called the Illuminati New World Order, which makes you wonder, was this a prophetic game? Or was this quite possibly made by an insider that was subtly warning the world of what is to come? In any case, this item is definitely cursed as the cards keep coming true, so beware. Starting off at number 10 is the Bassano Vase, and this one comes with its fair share of baggage to say the least. So the Bassano Vase is a silver vase that was made sometime in the 15th century, so it definitely qualifies as antique. And before you guys are like, it's vase, it's not. <laughs> now the story goes like this, a young bride was gifted the vase the night of her wedding, but she never ended up making it to the altar that night. She was murdered the same night with the vase in her hand, and the murderer was just never caught. As an homage to her, 
the vase was passed down in her family, but whoever seemed to get it would meet a horrible fate soon after. The vase owners all met unexpected deaths, so much so the family decided to box the vase away altogether. However, in 1988, it resurfaced and was found with a note that said, Beware, this vase brings death. Well, no sh. Karen. Whoever found the vase failed to include that note when he later auctioned off the vase, so the pharmacist who ended up buying it died three months later. A surgeon was next in line to buy it, and he too died within two months, despite only being 37 years old. Next up in line was an archaeologist, dead within two months, and the owner after that died within one month. So already that's four deaths, not even including the ones from the original family owners, and that's a lot. When the lid of the vase is removed, it's meant to almost attract people that have murderous intentions towards it and so what ends up happening is that it successfully does attract those killers and then those killers just murder the vase's owner. Italian newspapers claim the police confiscated it and buried it in a lead box in an unknown location and it's probably for the best. I'm not trying to die by no goddamn vase. I nah. What a cop out death. I'm not here to be such a you know live savage and then be killed by a vase. Like that's just not happening for me. <laughs> in our number 9 spot today we have the golden Eagle. This car was a 1964 Dodge 330 limited edition and it has been blamed for the death of around 14 people, which like how do we even let it get that out of control? It is said that the car started out as a police car originally, but there were three officers assigned to this car who all ended up taking their lives and other people's lives in horrible ways. Not in the car, but still super weird that this all seemed to happen after they had been using the cars for work. Because of this strange correlation, it ended up being sold off to another man. Throughout the 80s and 90s, it is said that because of the rumored cursed car, it became a point of interest for vandals. People began vandalizing the car only to meet their own untimely family fates, which were all met in strange ways. For example, it was said that one vandal died from being struck by lightning. It is said that the curse is so strong that one person decided to merely touch the car and it sent him into madness as he went on to commit atrocious crimes after that that I cannot even detail here on YouTube. The car now belongs to Wendy Allen who supposedly collects and decorates haunted cars for a living, so it seems as though it's finally found its home, far, far, far away from anyone else. At number 8 we have the wedding dress. Now this one is just sad and filled with sorrow and just simply not fun. So back in 1849, Anna Baker, the daughter of a very rich family, fell in love with a low class iron worker. Ah, the classic classist conundrum. My English teacher would have loved that alliteration and honestly I did too. Even though it was hard to say, not gonna lie, it did take me a few takes. Either way, she was hell bent on marrying this boy despite knowing her father would never accept it. She begged him, she pleaded with him, but he refused to buy. Well, let's face it guys, when a girl wants a boy, believe me, she will do anything to be with him, me included. Hopeless romantic, what can I say? Either way, Anna even bought a wedding dress in hopes they would get married one day, and that day just never came. Her dad bought the iron mill her boyfriend worked for and had him move to a different city, and so in anger and protest, Anna promised her dad she would never marry anyone, regardless of how many suitors they brought in for her. When her father finally died, her true love was also gone, so she spent her days angry and alone, which is understandable, I'd be fuming too. Her servants who had been in the house since she was little and basically raised her were sad when they used to see her dancing and walking around the house in the wedding dress. They felt like a part of her had died a long time ago and they were right. She passed away in 1914 and the baker's mansion was turned into a museum and that dress was put in a glass case inside her bedroom. Visitors report seeing a woman look back at them through the glass when they look at the dress which could mean she's very much still wearing it even in the afterlife. Others say they've seen the dress move despite there obviously being no wind inside the glass case. Whichever you saw, whatever you want to believe, this is a sad story. Love story. RT if you cry every time. I certainly do. A filling on number 7 slot is the necklace. Now this story was shared by one of CT Post's readers and she said she was gifted an antique glass necklace by her husband's family. But whenever she would wear it, she would always, always have an accident involving water. She'd knock over a glass, a flower vase would break, someone would drop their drink on her, she even fell into the pool at one point. Despite all these happenings, the woman never attributed them to the necklace until one day, her mother-in-law came over and said how nice it was to see her wearing the necklace. She went on to say it belonged to her great aunt and that she was actually a survivor of the Titanic. So I mean, that makes a lot more sense, bloody hell, like I get it now. So either the reader is extremely clumsy or the necklace is haunted by the bad juju of the Titanic.
panic. There's just no in between. So one or the other. Now at number six is Robert. Now Robert is a haunted doll that was owned by painter and author Robert Eugene Otto, and yes, he named the doll after himself. Narcissistic, we know, but we don't talk about it. It's fine. Now there are two origin stories about how the doll fell into Robert's hands. Now the first is that his granddad got it in Germany and gave it to him as a birthday gift back in 1904, and the other is that their servant gave him the doll as either a gift or as revenge for getting fired. I'd go with the latter. Now either way, however he got it, he became very obsessed with it and basically took it with him everywhere he went. Now looks wise, it is very creepy. It's a straw filled doll wearing a sailor's outfit with holes in its face, no mouth, and just a not very nice looking thing all around. It's just not ideal. And it was quite big as well, so I'm like, Robert, how did you carry this around with you? It's probably as big as you. Either way, legend has it the doll was aware of its surroundings and its facial expressions would change. The servant girl had a background in voodoo and hence the doll was apparently able to move as well. The family would hear it giggle and it would move things around Robert's room. Robert's parents even started seeing him talk to himself in two completely different voices when no one was around, and then they soon moved it to the attic away from him where it stayed till Robert got married and then later died. Apparently the doll disappeared after Robert's death and after his house was sold to various different people. Now the doll caused the future house owners a lot of horrible mishaps, broken bones, car accidents, divorce, losing their jobs, and more. The doll was then donated to the East Martello Museum in 1994 where people who visited it reported going through misfortunes after seeing the doll. So it's safe to say this doll just has beef with everyone in general. Coming in at number 5 is everything in the shop. Not even an exaggeration, I swear to god. So back in 2017, Daniel Parker, an antiques dealer working at Barnes the Antique Center, saw something in the store's CCTV cameras. He came into work that day and saw a rocking deer toy from the 60s on the ground when he 100% knew it was very much on the shelf before he left the day before. When rewinding the footage, you can see the toy moving on its own just straight up. Nothing is near it to make it move, it just moves for a while before getting pushed to the ground. Now Daniel said he tried recreating the movement and making it sway to see if it would fall on its own, and it didn't. He claims there have been hundreds of unexplained events in the two years he's owned the shop that he's never gotten to the bottom of. Customers blamed the ghosts of little children running around inside the shop, but he doesn't buy it. Paintings in the shop have even moved, and a cabinet once randomly exploded with zero trigger. His 11 year old daughter even went into the basement of the shop one day to explore, and she ran out screaming, claiming an arm had grabbed her. Daniel. You may be in denial, but I am certainly not. I feel like a child's ghost is like attached to each of the antiques in the store, which is just not a great selling point, to be honest. Maybe include that bit. Maybe include the haunting part in like the fine print. Don't say it outright. <laughs> loopholes. Eamon's loopholes 101. Now apparently the site where the shop is used to be a mill in the 1800s, and the mill owner hanged himself in the 60s, right in the middle of where the shop is right now. So I mean, it could be a bunch of kids or this bored mill owner's ghost. We don't really know. Either way. There are ghosts, there are haunted items that we don't want. No, no more items. At number four is the skull of Anne Griffith. Now, technically, you can't own the skull unless you live in the place it's located, which is Burton Agnes Hall in Yorkshire. Now, Agnes Hall is a proper Tudor mansion, and 300 years ago, it was owned by the three daughters of Sir Henry Griffith, who we don't need to know about because he's irrelevant. He's probably one of the, you know, bougie dukes and sirs that. There's just so many of in England. Either way, all three loved the house and did their best to make it the best it could possibly be, especially Anne. But one night, on the way back from visiting friends, Anne was attacked by some highwaymen. Her body was left for dead outside, but she was brought back to the house, but sadly died a few days later. While being half in and out of consciousness in her last few days, she told her sisters her soul wouldn't rest unless a part of her could stay in our beautiful home as long as it shall last. She made them promise to sever her head after she died and keep at Agnes Hall. But after she died, her sisters couldn't bring themselves to do it, which I don't blame them for, and so her body was buried in the churchyard, but then her full on ghost walked into the house and scared the hell out of everybody. Way to make an entrance, Anne. She would slam doors in the house, things would fall all over the place, and there was always a painful groaning sound echoing in the corridors at night. Her sisters eventually consulted the local vicar, who told them to exhume the body and keep their promise. Come on guys, we don't break promises, especially in death. 
Let's not do that. Her grinning, hideous skull, not my words, the articles, was then placed in the home and all the scary occurrences just stopped. A few years passed though and a servant of the house threw the head away onto a cart and the horse leading it immediately stopped and refused to move. It was lashed a bunch of times and still didn't move and the girl had to eventually admit that she did it and the skull was returned. Then another family owned the house years later and buried the skull in their backyard but then started experiencing horrible hauntings and they too had to bring the skull back in. So in conclusion, don't mess with Catherine Ann Griffiths. Mic drop. Filling our number 3 slot is The Foot Book by Dr. Sue. So apparently the backstory of this one is pretty messed up and I don't know why I'm saying apparently because I've read it and it is. It was owned by a family that reported hearing children's voices whispering around their house every time their daughter read it. As if the voices weren't bad enough, they felt this overwhelming unsettling feeling of being watched which they just couldn't shake. They called in paranormal investigator Shane Burgey who found out that the book was bought in a yard sale from a house where a quadruple homicide had taken in place. One of the victims was a two year old girl and after more in depth analysis, they found out that the stain on the cover of the book wasn't just dust or food, it was a blood stain. Nah, B? And now imagine being so happy giving this book to your kid and then realizing ages after she's been reading a murder blood stain book this whole time, I'd be like ugh, uh, child services just come take her away now, I failed. Shane took it from the family and donated it to the National Museum of the Paranormal in West Virginia and that was the end of that. So I'm I mean, you can't own it yourself, but you can look at it. Just don't touch and don't read. Now at number two is the Women of Lem statue, also known as the Goddess of Death statue. Now the statue was carved from pure limestone and was found in Lemba in Cyprus back in 1878, but was actually made sometime in 3500 BC. Now looks wise, it doesn't really look like women, but I mean, art is subjective, right? It can look like anything. It has two sort of stub arms coming out on the side and then another rounder pair underneath them, and I can kind of see how it kind of resembles a body, but also not. Now the first person to own the statue was Lord Elfont, but within six years of having it, all seven members of his family died in very bizarre ways. The next owner was Evil Minucci, whose entire family also died within four years of getting it. Then comes Lord Thompson Knoll, whose entire family also died within four years as well. Now after murdering various entire families, the statue disappeared off the radar for a bit, and then re-emerged in the hands of Sir Alan Biverbrook. Yes, all the owners had bougie Fancy names because it was the olden days, you guys. Let's just sweep under the rug. They all sounded like a Winston or a Churchill and like God knows what. I'm not hating before you guys are like, you're a hater. Either way, Biverbrook, his two kids, and his wife died later that year, but before it could take his two sons, they realized, hey, our lives kind of became shit after we got the statue. Maybe it's the statue. So they quickly donated the statue to the Royal Scottish Museum, but then the museum's curator who took care of the statue died in the same year. So really, the statue stopped at nothing. The statue is now in a glass case and can't hurt anyone else and ironically it was originally meant to be a fertility statue for an unspecified goddess but then obviously became the goddess of death. Accurate. Facts. Straight facts. And finally, at number one are the Tormans bunk beds. I know, right? How could bunk beds possibly be scary? Well, you're about to find out. So this may be the newest thing on our list since the bunk beds were bought by the Talman family in 1987. They bought them for $100, which by the way, a bargain number one and a red flag number two. They assembled it and then stored it in their basement. When they finally moved the bed upstairs, that's when things started going horribly wrong. For the next nine months, the family were constantly terrorized. The children started getting sick regularly and their son Danny said his clock radio started turning on by itself and switching channels and its vindicator just moved by itself. His parents didn't believe him till it happened to his dad Alan. Now Alan was painting the walls in the basement and put the brush on the table. He went up to eat and came back to find the brush in the bucket bristles up. Sus. Very sus. When his daughter was sleeping in the bed itself, she said she saw a red eyed witch behind her door one night and the next night saw fire spread in her room and then disappear appear into thin air. Danny said he saw the exact same thing the night after. They called in a pastor who was sure there was an evil demonic presence in the house and he was right. Banging doors, weird voices calling out and hallucinations for days. Now days before Christmas, Danny saw something so horrific he cried asking his parents to just move house. Like end it all people. Alan was done by that point and then cried out and was like hey if you want to fight someone you ghosts fight me. And so they did. Three weeks later he got home from a late night 
shift at 2 a.m. and heard howling from the garage. He went in and heard a voice saying, Come here. No one was there, but suddenly a fire ignited right in front of him. He ran to get an extinguisher, but when he came back, there was absolutely no fire, not even remnants of a fire. He then started sleeping next to his daughter to protect her, but saw a fog one night that whispered, You're dead to him. A relative even watched the children one night and reported seeing the same figure the kids had seen and screamed her lungs out. Two weeks later, they had had enough, finally took them bloody long enough, and then they destroyed the bunk beds and the haunting stopped completely. Damn, B. Ain't nobody got time for that. But also bunk beds are just very uncomfortable. I used to share one with my sisters. Poor. Nah. In our number 10 spot today, we have the Divic box. The box, which was originally just a plain old wine box, is said to have been possessed by a Dybbuk, which, in Jewish mythology, is a malicious demon that takes over the bodies of living people and uses them for evil. The box began to gain attention in 2001 when it was being auctioned off on eBay. The seller explained that he had bought it at an estate sale of a woman who had survived the Holocaust. When he first opened the box, he found two 1920s pennies, a lock of blonde hair bound with a cord, a lock of black hair bound with a cord, a small statue engraved with the Hebrew word shalom, a small golden wine goblet, one dried rosebud, and a single candle holder with four octopus shaped legs. Since he bought the box, he reported that strange things began happening, such as really horrific nightmares for him and anyone who had stayed around or touched the box. And when he gave the box to his mother as a birthday gift, she suffered a stroke the same day. The box ended up in the hands of Zach Bagan, who is a paranormal investigator, and it now resides in his haunted museum. The box also gained even more attention in 2018 when Post Malone touched it and has apparently been dealing with the repercussions of that ever since. In our number 9 spot we have the Jeffrey Dahmer Blade. This is one of the most chilling items that I found. This is a kitchen cooking blade that has the face of known killer Jeffrey Dahmer. Why does this product even exist? I don't understand people. Jeffrey Dahmer is known for being a cannibal, and so this product just pushes the envelope a little too much for me. Upon inspecting the item, I noticed that six people bought it, and 45 people are watching the item. Who are these six people and 45 watchers? I demand a reason for buying this item. Unless it is for Halloween purposes. Actually, no. Even still, this is too dark. Imagine the headspace you have to be in to even think of this item. I'm scared. Let's move on. In our number eight spot today, we have the Hope Diamond. This gorgeous, unusually large diamond is a blue color and worth an insane $250 million. In the off chance you have that kind of money laying around, I still wouldn't recommend purchasing it because it is said to be cursed. The curse dates back to the 17th century and it is said that whoever wears the diamond will have great misfortune and misery. Legend goes that the diamond was stolen from the eye of a sculpted statue of the Hindu goddess Sita and since then it has been cursing whoever owns or possesses the 115 carat diamond. Stories of the horrible fates of those who have since owned the diamond include people taking their own lives, people being killed intentionally by others, and some accounts even claim that the owner was quote, torn to pieces, which sounds like one of the worst fates out there. There have since been replicas made of the stone, and I think just to be as safe as possible, I'll probably stay away from those. Just in case. In our number 7 spot today, we have Robert the doll. Annabelle gets a lot of attention for being a haunted doll, but Robert is just as terrifying. Robert the doll was a childhood birthday gift from a grandfather to his grandson, who was also named Robert, but more often went by Jean. The story claims that while growing up with Robert, Jean would often be heard by his parents in his bedrooms having conversations with himself in two entirely different voices. His parents would sometimes be woken up in the middle of the night to the sound of Jean screaming, only to find him completely frightened in bed with overturned furniture around him. Jean would then blame Robert for all of the strange happenings, and at the time, no one really believed him. Jean kept Robert into adulthood, and it became what people would describe as an unhealthy relationship. Apparently, Jean took Robert everywhere with him and spoke as if he was a living entity rather than a doll. Okay, this story is already not great, but it gets worse. Jean lived in a house as an adult that was called the artist's house. Robert would be left in the upstairs window where children in the area reported seeing 
seeing the doll disappear and reappear, and they all chose to just stay clear of the house. After Jean passed away in 1974, a woman named Myrtle purchased the house, and apparently Robert as well. Visitors of the house could swear that they could hear footsteps and giggling coming from the attic where Robert was, and some even claimed to see the doll's expression changed if someone spoke poorly of Jean. Myrtle reported Robert moving around the house on his own, and after 20 years, she decided she had had enough and donated him to a museum. Robert still lives in the museum where he is safely locked up, but it is said that he still likes to place a little curse on those who take his photo without permission. The walls of the museum near Robert's glass case are riddled with notes from previous visitors and naysayers who are begging Robert for his forgiveness and asking him to remove any curse he has placed on them. In our number 6 spot today we have the Atlantis Ring. The Atlantis Ring was originally made of clay and it was found in 1860 in the Valley of the Kings in a tomb of an Egyptian high priest. It was then passed on to Howard Carter who kept it until he passed away in 1939. The ring was believed to be at least 5,000 years old and it had geometric symbols carved into it that were unlike anything known in Egypt. Here's where the story gets a little weird though. Howard is one of the people who discovered King Tut's tomb and he would later tell people he was wearing a talisman when the tomb was opened, also known as the Atlantis Ring. He claimed that the ring gave him protection and that just might be true because he is the only member of the team who didn't die a mysterious death after the opening of the tomb. Even those who visited shortly after the opening of the tomb were subject to this curse with a total of 18 victims in the end. Howard said that the ring is what protected him against whatever evil forces were at play. So I guess maybe the Atlantis ring is more like an anti-cursed object? I don't know, but what I do know is that it is all quite curious. There are now replicas that are sold, but I'm not sure if any hold the power of the real deal. In our number 5 spot today we have Thomas Busby's chair. Thomas was a man who lived in Thirsk, North Yorkshire and wasn't known as a very nice man, but he really loved his chair. I guess we all gotta have something. In 1702 he found his father-in-law sitting in it and it sparked an argument between the two. The father-in-law threatened to take his daughter back, which like should have never been a threat considering she's a grown woman, but I guess that's what went on in 1702. Anyway, that's when Busby kicked him out of the house. After this, Busby ended up going over to the father-in-law's house and actually killed him with a hammer and then hid his body in the woods. Of course the body ended up being found and this led to Busby getting convicted and sentenced to death. It is said that on his ride to the execution he asked to stop by his favourite pub for a beer and this request was fulfilled. Apparently as he finished his drink he said, May sudden death come to anyone who dares sit in my chair. I really don't know what it is with this guy in his chair, but while it currently resides in the Thirsk Museum, it has been recorded that many terrible fates have been met by the people who have sat in the chair. In 1972 it was decided to hang the chair from the ceiling so that no one could ever sit in it again which is probably for the best. So now, knowing this story, I want you to let me know in the comments if you had the chance, would you sit in the chair? I wouldn't. <laughs> In our number 4 spot today we have Annabelle the doll. When I saw the 2014 Annabelle movie I had no idea it was actually based on a real life doll, but since starting my job here at Most Amazing Top 10 I know all about the real story. This doll now resides inside of the Warren's Occult Museum where it absolutely belongs, but this story starts off with a college student named Donna who received the doll as a gift from her mother who had purchased it from an antique store. Donna and her roommate started to notice some pretty creepy things happening and swore that the doll was moving. They said it would appear in different places and positions throughout their apartment before things began to escalate. Donna began to find notes that said help in her apartment and one night found the doll in a different position and covered in some sort of red substance. The girls then decided to contact a medium who solidified all of their beliefs and told them that the doll had been possessed by the spirit of someone who was killed in their apartment building. For some reason the girls didn't immediately get rid of the doll and the story goes that their friend Lou, who was at the girls apartment, heard strange noises one night and went to investigate and he was then attacked and killed by Annabelle. The girls finally contacted a priest who told them that the doll was possessed by a demon straight from hell and then put them in contact with Ed and Lorraine Warren. They tried to do an exorcism on the doll but it apparently failed and now it is kept in a glass box in the museum where it hopefully cannot and will never do any more damage. 
In our number three spot today, we have the Aluru Rock. The Aluru Rock is a large sandstone formation that is located in the southern part of the Northern Territory in Australia. It is sometimes known as Ayers Rock, but regardless of what it is called, this area is sacred for the people indigenous to this place. This is part of the reason that those who visit the rock are asked not to take anything from the site. Despite this, people of course still choose to smuggle pieces of the rock out of the area and home with them. Well, other than the bad karma and just in general feeling like a bad person for doing the one thing you're asked not to do, as it turns out, this rock may hold a more sinister secret. Those who have stolen rocks from the Uluru have experienced things like extremely bad luck, severe illness, and even sometimes the death of those they love. The curse these rocks hold is seemingly so bad that it is very common for the company that runs the tours of the formation to receive letters of apology that contain the stolen rocks. Apparently these letters come so often at least one a day is expected. Maybe this is a weird coincidence, but it just seems to be happening a little too often for that to be the explanation. In our number 2 spot today we have the Bizano Vase. The Bizano Vase was cast from silver in the 15th century and was apparently a wedding present for a bride who lived in a small village in Napoli. On the wedding night, however, the bride was found dying on the floor with her hands wrapped around the vase. With her last breath, she vowed to have her revenge, and at this point it became unclear whether the vase was already cursed, or perhaps if this may be what caused the curse in the first place. As time went on, the vase was handed from person to person within her family, and with each new owner came a mysterious death. Because of this, the family decided to hide the vase away in some sort of secret location, and this worked for a while until the vase was unearthed once more in 1988. The vase also contained a piece of paper from the family that warned, beware, this vase brings death. Well, of course, whoever found the vase did not listen, and instead, they sold it once again. The first buyer, who is said to have been a pharmacist, owned the vase for three months before passing away under mysterious circumstances. Then there was the 37-year-old surgeon who died after having the vase for two months. After this was the archaeologist who only made it three months with this vase in his possession, and at this point you get where this is going. We don't know exactly where the vase ended up, but I'm hoping it's somewhere deep underground. Or maybe in space. Or maybe in the Mariana Trench, just anywhere far away from all of us. In our number one spot today, we have the Goddess of Death. This statue is sometimes also known as the Woman from Lem. This artifact, made out of limestone, was created sometime around 3500 BC, and it was found in Cyprus in 1878. Over the years, it has belonged to many different families who have all been ruined and dismantled by death. After the first six years of ownership, all seven members of the first family died. It then moved on to a second owner, and after four years, death began to come to him and his family. There was then a long period where it was unclaimed, but once the third family got a hold of it, several members of that family began to die as well. The third family ended up turning it over to the Royal Scottish Museum, where it thankfully still resides. However, the museum curator who handled the item was mysteriously killed a few days after. It is clear whatever curse this statue holds, it is strong and frightening. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Screaming Skull. Betisco Manor is often referred to as the House of the Screaming Skull, thanks to a legend that dates back to the 19th century. Legend goes that the owner of the manor at the time of this legend, had a slave who fell seriously ill. As he lay dying, he had one last request, which was to have his body returned to his home. It's a pretty fair request, and truly the least this family could have done for the man. In fact, he even said that he would never rest until his body was returned home. Of course, the owner of the manor was a huge piece of work who refused, citing that this would make the burial far too expensive, and instead he ended up having the body buried on the grounds of the manor. It is said that after this, the village in which the manor resides was plagued with ghostly screams and cries coming from the cemetery. Apparently, at the manor, they began experiencing things like the windows rattling and the doors slamming, seemingly of their own accord. Listen. I wish that this man could have just rested at home like he was supposed to be, but considering how awful these people were, I am so happy that he made sure everyone and their families were haunted because of their greedy behavior. In the end, it is said that the hauntings got so bad they ended up exhuming the body and bringing it into the manor. From here, it is said that the body somehow disappeared, all except for the skull, which still resides in the manor. In our number 9 spot today, we have Aluru Rock. Aluru Rock is a large sandstone formation that is 
located in the southern part of the Northern Territory in Australia. It is sometimes known as Ayers Rock, but regardless of what it is called, this area is sacred for the people indigenous to the land. This is part of the reason that those who visit the rock are asked to not take anything from the site. Despite this, people of course still choose to smuggle pieces of the rock out of the area and home with them. Other than the bad karma and just in general feeling like a bad person for doing the one thing you're asked not to do, as it turns out, this rock may hold a more sinister secret. Those who have stolen rocks from the Uluru have experienced things like extremely bad luck, severe illness, and sometimes even the death of those they love. The curse these rocks hold is seemingly so bad that it is very common for the company that runs the tours of the formation to receive letters of apology that contain the stolen rocks. Apparently these letters come so often, at least one a day is expected. Maybe this is a weird coincidence, but it seems to be happening a little too often for that to be the explanation. In our number 8 spot today we have the Atlantis Ring. The Atlantis Ring was originally made of clay and it was found in 1860 in the Valley of the Kings in a tomb of an Egyptian high priest. It was then passed on to Howard Carter who kept it until he passed away in 1939. The ring was believed to be at least 5,000 years old and it had geometric symbols carved into it that were unlike anything known in Egypt. Here's where the story gets a little weirder though. Howard is one of the people who discovered King Tut's tomb, and he would later tell people that he was wearing a talisman when the tomb was opened, aka the Atlantis Ring. He claimed that the ring gave him protection, and that just might be true because he is the only member of the team who didn't die a mysterious death after the opening of the tomb. Even those who visited shortly after the opening of the tomb were subjected to this curse, with a total of 18 victims in the end. Howard said that this ring is what protected him against whatever evil forces were at play. So I guess maybe the Atlantis ring is more like an anti-cursed object? I don't know. But what I do know is that it is all quite curious. There are now replicas that are sold, but I'm sure none hold the power of the real deal. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Bizano Vase. The Bizano Vase was cast from silver in the 15th century and was apparently a wedding present for a bride who lived in a small village in Napoli. On the wedding night, however, the bride was found dying on the floor with her hands wrapped around the vase. With her last breaths, she vowed to have her revenge, and at this point, it became unclear whether the vase was already cursed, or perhaps if this may be what caused the curse in the first place. As time went on, the vase was handed from person to person within her family, and with each new owner came a mysterious death. Because of this, the family decided to hide the vase away in some sort of secret location, and this worked for a while until the vase was unearthed once more in 1988. The vase also contained a piece of paper from the family that warned, beware, this vase brings death. Well, of course, whoever found this vase did not listen, and instead they sold the vase once again. The first buyer, who was said to have been a pharmacist, owned the vase for three months before passing away under mysterious circumstances. Then there was the 37 year old surgeon who died after having the vase for two months. After this was the archaeologist who only made it three months with this vase in his possession, and at this point, you get where this is going. At this point, we don't know exactly where this vase ended up, but I'm hoping it's somewhere deep underground, or in space, or somewhere else far, far away from us all. In our number 6 spot today we have the Belcourt Castle Chairs. Belcourt Castle is located in Newport, Rhode Island, and it is a former summer cottage. Construction on the cottage started in 1891, with it being completed in 1894, and inside there is a ballroom. This ballroom is important because it is said that it holds a group of haunted chairs. People who have visited the castle have reported a ton of strange happenings regarding this specific set of chairs. The reports include things like feeling chills racing up and down their spines, or feeling a strange sensation and a shift of energy while standing near the chairs, and some people have even explained how they have been pushed out of the chairs by an invisible force. I feel like just hearing these stories might be enough to explain the energy shift some people are feeling, but actually being pushed out of a chair by some sort of invisible force would be absolutely terrifying. In our number 5 spot today we have the Koh-i-Noor Diamond. This diamond has an extremely controversial history and it is the source of a lot of debate, but regardless of the ongoing conversations over who really owns it, we are here to talk about the curse that this stone is said to hold. The diamond dates back thousands of years and its curse is said to only affect men. It is said that the jewel can bring about great wealth, but it can also bring great misfortune as well to those who own it. Folklore states that quote, he who owns 
knows this diamond will own the world, but will also know all its misfortunes. Only God or women can wear it with impunity. Throughout the history of the diamond, it was passed among many people and rulers who all fought bloody battles while in possession of it. Every prince who had it is said to have ultimately either lost their power or their life while in possession of it as well. Part of the controversy of the diamond is how it ended up in the hands of the British royal family during colonization in the 1800s. Ever since then, it has only been worn by female monarchs, including Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth. In our number four spot today, we have the Destiny Ring. Rudolph Valentino was an incredibly famous silent film star before he passed away at the super young age of just 31 years old, and there are many out there who believe his untimely death was caused by the Destiny Ring. This ring is one that he picked up from a California jeweler. Before purchasing it, there were warnings of the stories which claimed that this ring was cursed, but Rudolph decided to go ahead with the purchase anyway. It is said after this ring came into his possession, his luck began to turn. The movies he starred in started to do poorly, some even flopping, and his career began to struggle. From there, he fell incredibly ill, and when he passed away, he was wearing this cursed ring. From there, after his death, his lover ended up receiving the ring, but once it was in her possession, she too fell extremely ill, and she decided to give the ring away. All the owners after that were reported to have died in strange ways or under mysterious circumstances, which has led to the ring now being placed in a bank vault, all locked up so that it hopefully can never cause harm to anyone again. In our number three spot today, we have The Orphan's Story. This is a book that was originally written in the early 1600s, but it didn't end up getting published until 2018. The Orphan's Story is about a 14-year-old Spanish boy who heads to the Americas. You know, a classic kind of coming-of-age feel-good story, right? Well. Not exactly, and that is exactly the reason why it took so long for it to be published. While the curse in this book doesn't come from the story itself, there is something dark lurking in those pages. The book's publisher, Belinda Palacios, who worked on the book for two years, explained that throughout those years, she was often warned of the cursed book and how every publisher who had tried to work on it before ended up passing away in a mysterious way before they could finish the book. When Belinda looked into this, it turned out to be true. Her research showed that those who tried tried to edit the book before, either found themselves in horrible accidents or with strange illnesses. Luckily, Belinda made it through the process unscathed, so let's hope that maybe the curse has been lifted? Either way, it's probably one I'll personally stay away from. In our number two spot today, we have The Van. Dr. Kevorkian was a man who's called an angel of death. If you haven't heard of these people before, they are doctors who like to euthanize patients, normally against their will. So this piece of work was doing just that, and one of his most important tools was his large white van. Yeah, huge red flag already. The van later went on to have the nickname Deathmobile, and it made headlines again when it found its way into a pawn shop. The reason the person who had previously had it didn't want it anymore is because they claimed that there were strange occurrences that began happening once it was in their possession. This story led to paranormal investigator and ghost hunter Zach Bagan purchasing it. Apparently people who enter the van immediately feel just overwhelming sadness, and they also feel like there are unseen eyes that are watching them at all times. In our number one spot today, we have the cursed chest. The story of this cursed chest starts off with a horrible person named Jeremiah Graham, who is said to have been making preparations for his firstborn son. Part of these preparations was having a hand-carved chest made, and the person he got to make this chest was a man who he had enslaved named Remus. When Remus finished the chest, Jeremiah was not satisfied, so he began to harm Remus, who would unfortunately later pass away from his injuries. The other people who lived and worked in the home were rightfully horrified and angry about this situation, so they decided to sprinkle dried owl blood inside of the drawers, all while placing a curse on the chest. It is said that the curse brought tragedy to anyone who put their clothes inside of it, and apparently it is a curse that is working with a vengeance, as it is said that this chest and the curse are responsible for taking the lives of of at least 16 people. Mm -hmm. 